Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trayman's RV Center, here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Redwood 3981 front kitchen. Beautiful fifth wheel here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. Some things to take into consideration when parking. Of course, your slide. If you're going to utilize your awning, there'll be plenty of room for your awning to come out. That's going to come out further than your slides. Then, of course, on your off campsite, your other slides. But what I also want you to think about is where your power and water connections are gonna be. Your power is gonna be in the far back corner on the driver's side of your tow vehicle. Or it stores in there. And then your water connection for the campsites are gonna be up in here in the second compartment, this whole docking station right here. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. When you arrive, first thing we're gonna do is unhook our hitch. Got the Lipper auto leveling system. Just gonna hit front there, you can bring that up or down. Once you've got your hitch off, take your vehicle completely out. Once your vehicle is completely out, make sure your front is higher than the rest, and then you're just gonna to touch auto level. Auto level is gonna run down all your auto leveling systems. I do recommend getting some jack pads, put them down underneath those. So when they come down, they are on some type of pad that'll protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks. Once we got our unit level and stable, this will start blinking. You'll hear a beep and it'll blink, you'll know you're level and stable. Once we got our unit level and stable, next thing we can do is hook up our power and water. Again, your 50 amp power cord stores inside. When you arrive, simply just open up this up and pull it in, pull it out. Now, retracting it, you have a retract button. But I recommend, I do this with one hand, but I recommend as you're running it in, you guide this over so you can get it all come in good. Now at the end of that 50 amp service, what you need is a 50 to 30 dog bone, comes your convenience pack. And then if you need to plug in to any 110, we've got a 30 to 110 adapter you can throw right on the end of that. Just run appliances accordingly when running off 110. You don't want to pop a bunch of breakers. We've got our power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. Now at the campsites, we're gonna hook up the city water connection. The whole docking station is right here. I'm going to remove this spray port hose. You can use this on both sides of the vehicle. Or your trailer, excuse me. Alright, so at a campsite, we are going to hook up to city wider connection. You're going to point all of your outlets just like this, white down, green to the left, red up, blue to the left. Now we're hooked up to city wider connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Use this when putting fluid in. Hook that up right here where it says city water. Make sure you're lined up for city water. Hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. We're gonna come right here to your hot water heater. This will lift right up off here. Set that down softly. And all we're doing at this point, folks, is making sure our drain plug's back in there. Throw some plumber's tape around that. Get that in there nice and snug. You may have left it out last time you were camping, so check to make sure you got that, that in there. Once that's in there nice and tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, if that hose has been on for a little while, you can go inside and deploy your slides. Uh, I'll show you how to do that when we go inside, but you can deploy your slides. What I need you to do is get to all your water taps. Open up your water taps so you get all the air out of the lines. Once you have a steady flow of water, shut the water tap off. 
then you can go ahead and turn on your hot water heater indoors there is an on off electric element right here the only time you ever want to turn this on out here is if you're hooked up to 110 otherwise turn on your hot water heater indoors if your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working check this uh reset bubbles if they're bubbled up press them back in they're just reset valves and then your pressure release valve now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water we're going to go dry camping or boondocking whatever you want to call it in that case we have two steps we will start by a power tank fill city inlet to your tank so we're going to fill our tank by going white down green left red up blue down hook up your hose same way make sure your water pressure or water heaters plugged treat everything the same way just the way to tell when this is full is on the inside you will hold down you have a battery and black and gray tanks that you can look at there's also a fresh water button hold that down until it says it's full once that's full remove that hose put this cap back on then we're going to switch to dry camping white down green and red up blue to the left now we're set for dry camping and now you will turn on your water pump turn on your water pump indoors whenever you want to utilize the water out of your pump all right we're all set up to camp with water and power let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit starting here in the docking station there's more directions for your level up system cable and satellite hookups front rear this should show you what what runs to what rooms and here's all your connections for those here's your water filter a spray port that this hose will hook up to hot and cold water coming out of that again all of your directions for it for uh using this there's your water there's your black tank flush we'll talk about that when we dump our black tanks here's a gray tank handle your front pass-through storage your propane over here is on a regulator simply turn it toward the tank you wish to be using lefty lucy to open continuing down your off-camp side your hot water heater again this is a flu for your furnace if you're running your furnace steer clear of that that will get hot and make sure nothing ever blocks this opening you have a couple places to dump there is one as well as a low point drain you have black and gray tanks there you also have another dump back here behind your tires lots of storage there's your handles for your dump back here again your power there's a ladder utilize it go up there a couple times a year check the seams of your roof caulk as needed maintain the roof of this trailer you're going to maintain the life of it accessory hitch come over here on your campsite got a couple outdoor speakers Let's see where that stereo is at in a moment again more access to your storage on both of these your big awning haven't ran that all the way out yet over here on your campsite you do have a couple of 110s this will hold your entry door open and in your storage over here i'll point out a few things so this is for your in command water system you can remove this and you can shut off individually like the bathroom the kitchen all the different waters cable 110 out here if you want to hook a tv out here here's all of your vacuum parts hook your vacuum up here turn that on sound system out here you hear your outdoor speakers cranking there oh uh, there's am fm bluetooth hdmi usb nice sound system touch it once to mute it hold it in to shut it off got docking lights your other propane over here up front here will be prepped for a generator and then your batteries check your battery posts every now and then make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road there's your fluid for your hydraulic uh, leveling system this is your battery disconnect that'll disconnect all the battery power to the unit that'll come important later when i talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector that about covers everything out here 
Let's go take a look inside your unit. So the first thing I like to point out in all units is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camp with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Also coming in the room here, you're going to look over here to your right to your control panel. Behind your sofa here. Touch home. Your passcode, which you can reset, is 0000. That'll bring up everything. Your settings, here's where you can start your generator. Your awnings, your slides, your lights. Hitch, that'll bring, you can do your auto leveling system from here. Uh, your heating. So we'll start up here. Here's your settings. You can hook up your Wi-Fi. Run down through all these. Hit your back arrow here. That'll take you back home. Here's where, if you hook it up, you can start a generator. Your awnings. I ran the front one out just about all the way because I want to show you. The bottom of your awning is white. The top is black. So we can run this out. You don't want to run it out until that flat falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that gray bar. That will extend itself past that and run itself up backwards. So I want you to keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure that you don't run it out too far. Make sure your entry doorway is not all the way open. Otherwise it'll hit the slide over here or the uh, awning mechanism. Run that back in here. I'm just going to run the rear one out just a little bit for you to see it working. Can't see it from here, but we'll walk back there. So there's the rear one starting to come out. We'll run that back in. Again, have someone watch that, let you know when it's how far it is out. You might be able to see it from this window, but it's kind of tight. All right, we're through the awnings. Now we go through our slides. We'll run them in and out when we're done here. We'll run them back in. Our lighting, turn on your awning lights or turn off all your lighting from here. Back to home, uh, your hitch. You can bring your hitch up and down from here. Triggers, inverter to turn your inverter on your fridge and your heat. Let's take your mode to mode let's go to cool let's go to low so temperature down so you can hear the ac kick on hear that i'm gonna shut the ac off you notice your ac will shut off kind of quick which it did now i'm gonna turn on heat uh, raise the temperature here above the 73 here's your kitchen one here's your living room heat there we go i heard the heat kick on i'm gonna shut the heat off and you'll notice it takes a few minutes for the heat fan to cycle through before it shuts off also coming in the entry doorway here, you're back. You can sweep everything right here and then lift that up and it'll suck it right in. I'll start here in the living room. You have your recliners here. Power recline, USB, uh, your sofa. I'll show you quickly how to turn your sofa into a bed. Cushions. You find it best to stand in the middle, gives you good leverage. Lift the front up, hold your legs out, pull it towards you, lay the back down, and just that quickly, you have another sleeping quarter. So reverse the process, put it back, just make sure you lift the back up first. Again, standing in the middle gives you good leverage for bringing your legs in and jack knifing this back down. 
turn our cushions and just that quickly we're back to our sofa. There's your TV on for you. All your remotes will be up in the kitchen drawer. You have antenna TV. This is also a Roku TV. Clear choice dental implants changed everything. That off. My digestive health. Fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. You can turn it on and see all the pretty colors. We can get brighter or, or, or dimmer. But the biggest thing, folks, is the heat. Crank the heat up in here if it's cold in the morning or evenings. Instead of using your gas, use our electricity and it will get it toasty in here in no time. There's also a remote for that. Remotes will be in the kitchen drawers. Coming to the side of your island here, here's where you turn your fan on up here. And here is your 12 volt safety alert carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned this is 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you are going to be gone for the day, if you're out dry docking, nothing plugged in charging your battery, use your battery disconnect to keep this running your battery down while you're gone. Opposite side of the step, access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Ton of 15s in there. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camp. Kitchen area, you can strap down your chairs for travel. This will lift up for an extension. Individual lighting up in here. Head up into your kitchen. The remotes will be placed in this drawer here. You have more lighting up here, accent lighting, 110s, more lighting. Here's your 110 with GFCI reset. Your stove, turn that to light. Hit your spark when your gas is turned on, that'll light up. Oven down here, looks like you turn it to light. Yep, does have pilot light on it. Self explanatory microwave does have a high. And low exhaust or is lighting another 110 110s and usb ports up here all your fridge controls are here make sure you strap this in for travel don't want this door swinging open on you not much more to talk about up here other than your plumbing keep an eye on it it's all pecs nowadays uh just maintain it like you would your home but remember you're bouncing this home down the road so you may have to look at it more than once every now and then the pop-up power port here usbs 110s smoke alarm in between your bedroom and your living room for travel make sure that your bedroom door as well as your bedroom to the bathroom doors are snapped back like that and here turn some lights on You'll see a few of these throughout the unit. These are temperature readers. It allows you to, the thermostat to work better. Down here you select, you're on 50 amp service. 110s, more lighting here. Individual for each side. The other television here. Each other remote. Find a remote for this. Turn that on. Okay, smart TV has a 120 hertz refresh rate. Get that off. Remote feet for your TV in there. And coming back into your bathroom back here. Put all of our lightings over here. 110 with GFCI reset. Max air vent, just touch on. That will open and turn on the max air vent. Uh, you can increase the speed or just close it yourself. Touch it once, close itself back up. Another door to make sure it's secure for travel. Shower door. Make sure that's snapped in there nice and tight. Again, more plumbing to maintain. And another door to make sure you snap open. Closet and washer and dryer prep. You also have a couple of 110s back here with GFCI reset. That about covers everything on the inside. 
I do want to mention one thing over here back on your control panel. Up here is where you can check your tanks. Um, here's a spot you can turn your water pump on. Make sure you shut it off there. Water heater. Turn it on here for gas. Here electric. Here if on auto, which is gas and electric. Interior lights. Exterior lights. Security lights. Back to all zeros. All right, so we are going to go to slides. We're gonna start bringing our slides in. All right, now close the unit up. Come to home here. Put my zeros in. I can shut off all my interior and security lights. They look all off here. Go here, shut off those lights. Now I know all my main lights are off. Any lights that are left on are individual ones that I have, I have left on. I'm gonna walk through the unit. Shut all these off. All my lights are off now. Now I say doors and drawers. Make sure all doors and drawers are secure. Nothing's going to impede your slides. So I turn on the living room lights. This lights it up a little bit in here. Again, go through, make sure your doors are snapped back. Shower doors snap back. Nothing's in the way of any of your slides from coming in. We're going to go back to home here. We're going to go to slides. I like to start with this bed slide because it's the back one that I can watch come in. Again, make sure your doors are clo closed. Just can't stress the importance of making sure everything is clear of your slides when you run these in. So there's that bedroom slide. Now I'm gonna bring in this other kitchen slide. You can bring these in whatever order you want. I just know that both of these are on individual slides. Dinette side kitchen slide. Outdoor side kitchen slide. Now we're going to bring in our hydraulic slide. See this one bring in. I'm going to start to come in with it. These two are both on the same hydraulic mechanism. Again, these utilize every inch. See, I did a bedroom slide first so I can watch it. All of our slides in. Oh, go back to our main power. Let's go back to home real quick and shut off our interior lights. Shut that off and exit the unit. Now bringing these steps up, main thing you want to do is make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this can catch on it. Bring this up, it's hydraulic assisted. See, I'm not even touching it. Bring it up nice and slow, set it in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn this handle and your door is ready for travel. At this point, we're gonna unhook our power, our water, and our cable. We're gonna come to our low point drains. We're gonna open those up. Lastly, we're gonna come to our hot water heater. Lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna dump the remainder of your hot water out, just like so. Then you can pull your drain plug and put your door back on. We're gonna come in here again, turn on our auto leveling system. You're gonna bring, you're gonna hit retract. Retract is gonna bring up all of your auto leveling systems. Once that's done, you can go back to hitch, the front, bring your front, up and down once you got your hitch hooked up head on up to the dump station at the dump station park accordingly you got two places to dump you got a gray tank up here 
and a black and gray back here you're going to want to start back here start back here hook up your hose comes your convenience pack down there first thing you do is pull this black tank now after it sounds like that black tank's no longer draining or someone's inside checking the panel and it shows that it's empty leave that black handle open come up here and hook up the hose at the dump station leave that black handle open and let that run for a good five minutes that's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank close that up hose is unhooked come back here close your black handle and pull your gray tank the gray tank is going to be cleaner water as you sink to your showers that'll clean your sewage hose out for a little bit then you take that sewage hose come back here and hook it up to this wastewater that's going to be all of your front kitchen again that'll be cleaner waters that'll clean your sewage hose out for you your handle for that is in here once you're hooked up pull this gray handle once it sounds like it's empty push it back in take your sewage hose store it in a nice sanitary convenient place and head on home yeah and we thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this redwood for many years to come happy camping